the, the mission statement hasn't changed, but obviously the focus of the Hampton School District is are the students. Uh, we serve approximately 1,150 students, uh, grades pre-K through eight. Uh, that means that we have students who are three years old uh, begin in our preschool program, and as you know, that program is a requirement through uh, the federal government, IDEA, uh, which, uh, which is law that says that we must provide education for those youngsters that are identified as disabled. Um, at, the begin at the age of three. So we do have a program for those youngsters in Hampton that are disabled, uh, a three-year-old program and a four-year-old program. And then when they're five, they, they, um, they, they attend kindergarten. Um, Hampton is very fortunate. We have a full-day kindergarten, uh, probably one of the best investments this community made. Outstanding program. Uh, I, I observe and spend time in the classrooms and uh, without a doubt uh, that that investment by this community back five years of three or four years I guess about four years ago um, was an investment that uh, it, it just it, it paid uh, I believe in great dividends this past year we had um, five goals and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the detail because we've done this with you last year and and again when we met in in, during budget deliberations, but obviously our number one goal is around curriculum and instruction, ensuring that we have high quality uh, curriculum and strong instructional practice in our classrooms. Let me interrupt and just say for folks that are here, in your handout, the goals in detail are just behind the slides. In case, in retrospect, you want to reflect on what those goals have been, they're, they're here in your packet in detail. Uh, the second is uh, human capital resources. You know, our most valuable um, asset in the district is our teachers and our instruction. Uh, again, uh, I think that the Hampton School District is very fortunate to have well-qualified, highly qualified teachers in the classroom. In addition to that, um, uh, support staff that um, make our schools just an excellent place to be. We employ between substitute teachers, um, co coaches, uh, teachers, uh, um, paraprofessionals, custodians, clerks, uh, supervisors, um, food service staff, uh, 308 uh, people in the school district. And so you can imagine that that is a critical piece uh, for the work that we do every day. In addition, uh, one of the goals we had this past year was around communication. Uh, we have a brand new website for the school district this year. Uh, we also have um, a new uh, parent information called Blackboard Connect where we're constantly sending emails and doing uh, reports to them uh, via a Blackboard Connect so that we have good communication. We've uh, been very pleased um, relative to uh, Channel uh, 22 and I'll get into that in a minute. The other one was around governance. The fourth, uh, the fourth goal was governance and those were the really the board's uh, goals uh, to address concerns in the district. Uh, that had to do with things like school calendar, transportation, uh, updating their policies and procedures. So th that's the role that that <coughs> particular goal played. And the last one is uh, finance and facilities, uh, making sure that our facilities were safe and clean um, and that we were um, wise in our spending and our finances. And I think the report that Nathan will give you will indicate to you um, the, that we took great um, great pain in ensuring that um, the money was well spent in the community. If I could just highlight some accomplishments in each of the areas in curriculum, we have revised uh, our language arts. We successfully in, uh, implemented a STEM program, very exciting at the middle school, grades six, seven, and eight. Our students are taking a class in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, Principal O'Connor is intent on making sure that his school is a uh, school that is very um, uh, in the forefront around technology <coughs> and <coughs> the areas of uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we also have begun discussions in Marston. You know, you, you've got to have a strong foundation and you've got to be able to feed kids into programs. And so uh, Principal Coster is doing that at grade, did that this year at grades three through five. And we also had a team of guidance counselors update uh, uh, their uh, co a comprehensive guidance plan for the district. And they actually just presented last week to the school board. So that, that was uh, completed. In technology, we have wireless upgrades in all of our buildings. Our phone systems have been upgraded. Um, we now have a new policy, uh, BYOD. 
um, and that means that students are now allowed to bring your own device to school and to be used in, in instruction and learning and we have firewalls and protections so that we don't worry about the use. Um, it's very controlled by the teachers but uh, we have allowed students to bring their uh, devices to school. Um, these tools have opened up um, doors for students that you know, five years ago we would not have dreamed about. Uh, and we have implemented a new student information system, one that's upgraded. It's called PowerSchool. Uh, we're, we're very pleased. We have it now. The teachers are now um, able to use it. We're just about ready to open up the parent portal. Uh, we'll be opening that up next week so that parents can access information about their students through the parent portal uh, and providing uh, updates to, to classroom assignments and homework, but also to monitor students uh, grades and work in school so that that has been completed we will continue to work on that because there's so many facets of that particular system one of the nice parts is is that it, it transitions very nicely into Winnicunit High School because they use power school so we're working together to ensure that student information is uh, it gets to Winnicunit uh, communication I, I mentioned Blackboard Connect um, channel 22 we, we um, we provided over 200 hours of programming on Channel 22 uh, around school district uh, programs. And that's classroom programs, uh, library programs, concerts, uh, all kinds of uh, special events that occurred in the schools uh, with teachers and s uh, with staff and students. And uh, we were very pleased with the result. We're anxiously awaiting Channel 13. We're waiting for the final cable connections to be made so that um, that the Hampton School District can use Channel 13 as their main um, portal for uh, videos and, and school events. So we're, we're just waiting for that uh, notification that that project is done. So we expect that within, the, within a few days, actually. Um, over the year for communication, we held a number of forums. Uh, this was opportunities open up to the community, to our parents, grandparents, guardians, whoever. Uh, to come and to um, hear uh, reports and information around school safety. Obviously, that's a very important one for us. Uh, we did some uh, information on uh, bullying in the school. Uh, the school board held forums on school calendar to get a sense of what people would like to see in calendars. In our special ed Title I department, we ran parent information nights around childhood anxiety and different ways in which we teach children, kind of involving parents to join us as partners uh, in the education. And we had a great response with parents coming in the evening to these educational sessions. Again, another way for us to communicate about what happens in our district. And I did mention the website, and we, we did upgrade that, and um, we're pretty pleased with that. It's, it, that's going very well. Uh, in terms of human resources and our teachers last year, we, have, we implemented a new teacher supervision and evaluation model um, that was, we worked with teachers, uh, was approved by the school board and um, implemented and, um, last year, and we had great success with that. We also did an administrator one so that we had two brand new systems uh, for supervision in those two areas. Uh, we did um, a review of staffing needs and you know our enrollment has dipped a little bit as you know um, and so the board has decided that we have to monitor our enrollment and ha make sure that we have the appropriate number of staff uh, to meet our, our student needs and last year we had a reduction of we had a reduction of three <coughs> classroom teachers and some paraprofessionals because of the enrollment dip. Um, our projections uh, stay that, say that we're going to stay steady for a while. We won't see any more decreases in student enrollment, um, but we won't see increases for a while. Um, so we kind of monitor that. We do an update every year on our enrollment projections so that we can stay on top of that and be prepared um, for, for, the, for the future. We also completed a substitute handbook. I, um, Joan, uh, if you don't mind, Joan was there tonight. Uh, Joan is one of our substitutes and uh, we had a training. Uh, this is new to the district. We developed a handbook so that when our substitutes come into classrooms, they know what the expectations are, they know the systems that are in place, and they also know the protocols. Uh, so that they're very clear about how to handle situations like fire drills, like evacuations, like lockdowns, and all of the kinds of things that we 
practice with the kids. Um, and so uh, in, in, in ensuring that all of our substitutes were confident when they walked into the classroom, uh, we provided a training tonight, which was sort of the, 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 the end of the process for us. We will do this annually, though. We would like to bring in our substitutes once a year and review all of those things with them. Joan uh, gave me a little heads up on her way in that things went pretty well. So um, I was there for a few minutes, and then I had to, had to leave. Uh, and we also last year negotiated, uh, successfully negotiated a two-year contract with our Teachers Association. Uh, two years is a short contract, but we also know that the, you know, the economy was in flux. And so no one wanted to commit themselves for a long period of time until we got a sense of where um, things were going. So we, we did a two-year contract and uh, successfully completed that, and that was implemented July 1 of this year. Um, around school climate last year, we conducted a three-day safety survey. We hired a company that was made up of um, Navy SEALs. Uh, very, uh, they were awesome. Uh, they came in and they looked at every nook and cranny in our buildings. They spent three days with, and it was great because it was, at one, at one point there was a parent night. There were parents everywhere, so they really got a sense of our building, how they're used, where people are, and then turned around and gave us a number of recommendations for things to work on. And they weren't looking to uh, create a barrier, or they weren't looking to create a, a, a jail-like setting. That was not their intent at all, but to give us a good... Um, recommendations about how we can ensure safety of all of our kids. And a lot of it was around intruder safety, unfortunately. I mean, I hate to even talk about it, but it's a reality, and we have to be prepared. And so we have been preparing with our teachers um, uh, so that everyone was um, confident in making decisions in those situations great, great process. And then they completed it with a tabletop exercise. We had the fire, the police, the EMTs, uh, Sacred Heart. We had everybody at the table in a tabletop exercise for the whole day run by these, the, the, the guys from, uh, these three guys. And it was uh, excellent. Everybody really got a lot out of it. We had nurses and teachers there so and to be prepared uh, should we ever have to face anything. Uh, we continued, uh, um, let's see, where am I, school climate. Uh, we continued with our um, anti-ing bully program, Oveus, uh, nationally recognized evidence-based program uh, to, um, to address the issues around bullying. And we continue to do that both at Center and at Marston. And at the middle school, they use a program called PBIS, Positive Behavioral Intervention Strategies, and they continue with that. Uh, last but not least, um, we did, um, in our business area, we did renew our contract with First Student. Um, Nathan did the negotiations. Uh, <coughs> we, um, w we think we did pretty well in terms of uh, our negotiations and keeping that, um, um, that contract um, at a reasonable rate. Uh, we also finished the center school project. Uh, pleased that we finished the center school project on time and under budget. And Nathan will give you a little heads up on that. And during the course of the year, we continued to search for extra money. We, we received money from the McKinney-Vinto, which is the homeless grant. Uh, professional development, that's money that we can use to help with training for teachers. We also are uh, looking at local tuition, um, and um, obviously we access money from the cable franchise fees in order to run the programming for Channel 22. Last but not least, I can't not bring up the awards and recognition uh, <coughs> in the district. I, you know, again, it's a, it's just a, just a wonderful school district. I, I hope you real. I think you know that. I think I've said it. But the accomplishments and the work that's done here with the families and the kids and the teachers is just wonderful. Uh, obviously, um, prefer, you, you know this, that Principal Costa was selected as the Principal of the Year, uh, Elementary Principal of the Year. She will be headed to Washington uh, next week to meet with uh, Secretary Duncan and the President, and they have a big three-day meeting with all the elementary principals of the year, so she'll be representing the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we are awaiting word from Washington. Um, we haven't heard yet, um, but we should know soon. Uh, at this point, Center School has been nominated for a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. Uh, that was nomination came from the New Hampshire Department of Ed based on statistics that they 
uh, weaned out of all of the information that we send to them, which we have to, around test scores and student performance. And uh, so uh, they have been nominated by the state to be a, a Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. Uh, and then it goes on to the federal level, and the feds have to review all of the documentation, and then we're notified. So we're awaiting that notification. Um, Two other awards that we received this year, uh, Marston School was selected uh, by the, in the Commissioner's Circle of Excellence. Uh, they are uh, considered a reward school, and they were considered that for their performance in uh, their assessments. Uh, the kids have done a wonderful job in improving, in especially in some of the um, the subgroups. You, you've heard me talk about how the test scores are broken up by subgroups but our um, economically disadvantaged subgroup as well as our special ed subgroup have really shown tremendous growth. And because of that, uh, the commissioner and her staff have selected Marston as a, a reward school in her circle of excellence. And the last one was, again, Title I is a, a grant that we get for economically disadvantaged youngsters. And because of the work that was done and the results and the performance of those youngsters in that subgroup, Marston was also selected as a Title I distinguished school. So uh, it was a great <coughs> year, and um, we, look forward to, um, we look forward to continuing this, this work. It, it's been terrific. So I won't say any more. I've uh, bragged enough, and so I'll turn it over to uh, Nathan to uh, update you on finances.